Good morning. My name's Mark. Welcome to the video. Well, it's a Sunday morning. It's a bit of a drizzly and overcast morning, but today I'm on the river and I'm going to be float fishing for grayling. I've got a short window, really. I've got around about an hour and a half to fish before the heavens open. It's drizzling at the moment, but I'm under some trees. So uh, let's cast in, see if we can get a lovely grayling. So this is the stretch of river I'm going to be targeting. It is quite high at the moment. It's a good couple of feet, possibly slightly more up. And uh, although it is dropping, we've got more rain due and it may well start rising again. So that's the floater tend to use for grayling fishing. It's one of these lovely little loafer floats by Drennan, a crystal pattern. And uh, you can see it's connected at the top with the rubber and the middle and the bottom. I haven't got any shot then until we go all the way down to about a foot from the hook and then I've got a bulk of uh, AAA shot there. You might also notice I've got a small swivel just below that. Now the reason for that swivel is for two purposes. One is that when you're fishing with things like uh, double maggots, sometimes when you retrieve in the rig, they sort of act like a propeller and your bottom hook link tends to get twisted up. Similarly, grayling actually corkscrew when you catch them. So again, that can cause this part of your rig, the hook link, to all twist up. So I put a little tiny, I think it's a size 14. It's actually a Westlake one. I got it from Go Outdoors. And uh, I just attached that there to prevent the twisting of that hook link. And then the hook is a Camasan. I'll show you the, the hook pattern in a minute. So I'm using a Camasan B520, size 16, two and a half pound hook link, that's a 0.12 diameter, and it is a microbarbed hook. And the reason for that is that I find that grayling will often shed the hook. So there's a couple of circumstances where I use microbarbed hooks. One is grayling fishing, and the other one is dace fishing that you get a similar problem with. And having a microbarbed hook means that you land more fish. From experience, I know that this uh, swim is around about two and a half to three foot deep, but uh, I'm guessing there's a couple of foot of water on at the moment. So what I'm going to do is uh, just deepen up and uh, put a couple of maggots on the hook. I have been trickling about 15 maggots in at a time, just sort of on the edge of the crease, as we call it there. So let's just give it a little go now. Little cast in. So I can see the float nicely. They, they are nice and visible of those loafer floats. They've got a quite a thick dome top. And uh, you can see them when they, you trot quite a way down the swim. And we can keep putting a bit of feed in. Apologies if you're seeing some spots of rain on the lens it's going to be a bit tricky i think to to prevent that so it is a species that when sort of late autumn and winter comes around i, I absolutely love fishing for grayling it's one of those things i do every year and i really look forward to it i've fished when it's been like minus eight and still got plenty of fish so it's a species you can count on when everything else isn't biting because it's too cold grayling grayling will give you a good sport yeah i'm just a little bit concerned that the water's too high at the moment and uh i'm guessing that the, the grayling might be sort of shoaled up somewhere but I tend to start at this point of the swim. Apologies, I am keep bending down for me maggots. Yeah, it was a bit of a rush this morning. I thought the weather is gonna hold off for about an hour and a half and then it's gonna start pouring down. So I thought I'll just rush and get everything together. You've probably seen that I'm fishing this lovely close face reel. I do love close face reels. I've broken a couple of them, so uh, I'm a bit gutted about that. I need to either buy some more or get them repaired. But I often use this close face reel for river fishing. It's very easy action. You just sort of press your finger on the, the cowl there and that releases the bail on. 
and it's quite a small compact reel and when you're trotting like we are this morning it's ideal the other thing i love fishing with is a center pin but i'm not the best at casting out with center pins in this particular swim you do need to sort of cast out a little way if i had a swim where i was sort of standing in the water or uh, the current was sort of closer in i'd fish my center pin but today i'll persist with my close face reel so i had a few trots down without any indications so what i'm going to do is keep feeding and then i might just move a little bit might just move a little bit further down there sometimes you get the fish sort of shoaled up in these slack areas so i'm going to explore that for a couple of casts if i like just pop pop a float there for the moment i'm also going to deepen up a bit it looks about right to me but I haven't plumbed the depth because it is, it is a bit tricky in this sort of current uh, and with variations in current. So what I tend to do is I just cast out with an estimated depth and then basically keep deepening up until it drags under and that means that I'm obviously dragging bottom and then I just shallow up a touch. Now with grailing, the bigger grailing tend to be close to the riverbed. They tend to spend the days rummaging around in gravel and getting things like nymphs as we call them and uh, crustaceans from the bottom of the river so you will find that you've got to get quite close to the bottom to catch the bigger ones I'm dragging a little bit now when I when it trots down it's obviously reaching the slightly shallower section and, and it's dragging so Ooh, now, I think that was a leaf. <laughs> I'm just going to give it a little cast out into the current. I'm uh, kind of not expecting them to be there, but I could be very wrong, so. different places well, I think I've got I'll find out now the stick <laughs> it's one of the problems when you're fishing with the when the water's high up you do get all sorts of stuff that's floating down we've got a lovely stick fish <laughs> down the rain is coming down quite a bit now we've got all sorts of floods on the local rivers water's been very high on the local rivers because of all the rain and I just managed to get out for a really cracking day and roach fishing session the other day wasn't able to film it I'm afraid because the club doesn't uh... oh here we are I think we've got a grayling on yep we've got something on that came quite down the swim yep, it's not a bad fish I don't think can usually tell that it's not a trout because uh, although there are plenty of trout in here obviously they're out of season so I don't want to target those but um, when you catch a trout they tend to leap out the water and do all sorts of acrobatics and this is hanging a little bit deep just getting the float closer now and it could be a nice grail in this
power in this. Whoa, it's a nice grayling. Power in this flow is quite something. Oh my goodness, yeah, it's a good, good grayling. Making a right mess of net in it. <laughs> Getting all excited. Whoa. going to let it rest a little bit although it's very very feisty so what an absolute beauty a beautiful grayling in the net took a little while a few trots down it's a beautiful grayling beautiful grayling in the net Got this wonderful big fin there distinctive fin and that is a stunning fish they do wriggle quite a lot, so they're very difficult to hold. So I'm going to get this quickly unhooked now, give it a rest, and then return it. Fantastic, that's what we came for. Now, grayling are notorious for sort of going belly up, so always give them a good rest before you put them back. So that's what I'm going to do now. It's uh, righted itself. Make sure that they're properly rested before they go back. There we go, fantastic. Wonderful, beautiful, beautiful grayling in the net. And uh, yeah, that's what we came for. So I might just have one more cast. The rain's coming down quite heavily now. So I'll have one more cast. Just see if we get another one. If not, I'm happy with that one. One last cast. <laughs> Whoa, the rain's coming down. <laughs> I haven't got any waterproof, so... Um, right, well, I think I'm gonna call it quits there. I'm really pleased with that. I've got a cracking grayling, and uh, I'll be back, so watch out for more of these little fishing adventures. Please feel free to subscribe. Oh, and by the way, I do have a website, and I do write articles about various types of fishing, and I, I'll put a link in the description about grayling and about fishing for grayling. So check the description and you'll see more information there. So the heavens are opening now. We've got rain coming down and uh, I'm going to go home. I have a big cup of coffee and a, perhaps a bacon butty, but a cracking morning. I've only been on here for, well, less than an hour. And within about 15 minutes, I've got a super grayling in the net. So I'm absolutely chuffed about that. And uh, that's the target species. And I'm going to go home happy. Thanks very much for watching, take care, enjoy your own fishing and I'll see you on the next video. Bye now, thanks. <laughs>